This is the story of House Taurus, a family of minor nobles from northern Sardinia and their path through history. A grand campaign encompasses several different Paradox games with a save translator that allows you to continue the game through them all continuously. We will begin our journey during the chaotic medieval period in 1066 and in it somewhere past 2400 in the Space Age, though it may well be the House of Taurus does not make it. In these campaigns, we will simply follow the changing of events, the movement of reform and regression that will define the family, nation, and one day species. I've been doing grand campaigns for years by myself, but think they will be a lot of fun for you to enjoy. I will be done with light roleplay. The making of choices is based on realism and character interactions. There will be nothing meta or casual about this series, so map painting is off the table. The House of Taurus is one shrouded in mystery as it is not known before the current ruler Andrea Torres. The family is likely to have been nobles of the Byzantine Empire, who ruled in Sardinia until very recently. Religion has dominated the politics of our court and that of Greater Italy, as the Great Schism has split the East and West in two, with our family following that of the true church in Rome. Our father spent the end of his life ensuring that the heathen churches of the Byzantines were given to Benedictines, and that His Holiness' word would be done. The damned leader of Pisa sought to stop this and murdered several of the servants of God, causing a blood feud we are not soon to forget. Sardinia is ruled by Jedics, or judges at this time, who are treated as minor kings. Despite this, we rule lands that are poor, weak, and unpopulated. The great city of Cagliari in the south is the true power on the island. Our family may be little of note, but if the ambitious goals of our family continue, they will not remain so for long. This is the first episode of the Taurus Grand Campaign. Please leave a like and subscribe if you enjoy the content. I, as I have said, I think over the last week or two, since I kind of decided to do it, am going to be starting another Grand Campaign. The last one I did was obviously the multiplayer one. I mean, Paradox games, for me, have always been about, like, the mechanics, but really the story, right? I mean, you don't need to be full in role-playing to just kind of follow the story of your character, your country, whatever you want to, right? I mean, I think most of us always do that kind of in the back of our mind. I've been doing grand campaigns for a long time. Uh, I've been doing them for years, and they are fantastic. Generally, the, the, the scale of things just becomes so dramatic that, I don't know, it, it's one of those cases where I always find it's, when I get really get into a grand campaign, I can, like, it's, it's hard not to just play it all the time. Anyway, point being, we are going to do a grand campaign starting as Judic Andrea of Logodoro. I'm saying that wrong. House Torres as Sardinia. Sardinia is really interesting. It's a, it's an island nation, obviously. It's got a lot of natural resources. It's really strategic in the Mediterranean, both militarily and economically, the trade lanes, obviously. And up until recently, it was actually Byzantine, uh, aka Roman, right? All right, so we are at 46. We are a diplomat. We are a naive appeaser. We are trusting, zealous, and ambitious. So... And really interesting trait combo we're going to have to play out here. So we're very Christian, very holy. It kind of fits with like the history of uh, working with a Pope or ambitious. So we might look to expand a little bit, but I want to rush it. So we'll see. And we're trusting. So if we make friends, we're going to trust them. Well, we do have an heir. We do have a son, Marianu uh, de Torres. <sighs> very weird. He's cynical, vengeful, and brave. He's an amateurish plotter. Very bad stats. He's so uncharismatic. Just no social skills. And then there's our current wife of court. Uh, Judisa Benitia, she's very old. Lustful, compassionate, and greedy. We don't have a lot of income, only 1.3. We're not very wealthy. Cesari is one of the more minor uh, cities within Sardinia during this time period. Cagliari is the big one. Cagliari is the big city in the south. It had been the seat of the Byzantine government on the island, uh, and in the past, just, you know, very, very prized by the Romans. So we're one of the more impoverished regions of Sardinia. So although we're very ambitious, and we are, uh, we, we know we don't have a lot of advantages going for us. We only have 480 uh, soldiers. Cagliari has 1,400. So unless we can secure some good marriages, which we're unable to right now, our, our son is already married. So unless we can get some more kids and some alliances, we may end up having to bend the knee to Cagliari. We'll see how this goes. They're our big rival. We're willing to do it. And then there is Constantino again. He's with Apesian, so we don't really like him too much. Let's go ahead and uh, try and sway Jedi Marianu. We're gonna, we'll, we'll, we'll take a trip down there and see if we can befriend him. Because we need some allies on Sardinia. We have no children by which to make alliances with. So we'll have to rely on our diplomacy. Thankfully, we have a lot of it. We have 19 diplomacy, so. 
So we are pretty old too. We're 48. So a lot of our ambition, we still have it, but we haven't been able to do a lot. Our wife has only given us one child and we have no grandsons right now at all. We have no grandchildren. Mariano is still young. He's 26. He's got a very young wife of 20, but they haven't, they haven't given us grandkids yet. So our line is not secure right now, which is not a place we want to be in. Obviously, Jedi Andrea would be very concerned about that given that he's ambitious. So obviously he wants a future for his house and without heirs, can't do that. We're, we're not a very wealthy family. We're we'd probably be a minor noble family. We do have the Jedi title, Jedi title, which is correlated to basically being a king, but really it's not. It's like we're a very minor noble essentially with delusions of grandeur given our ambition. I've been corresponding with your Chancellor Lissandru, and I must say that I have come to see you in a new light. Perhaps you are even someone that I could one day call my friend. Wonderful. Wonderful. Oh, he really likes us now. Look at that. He's terrified of us. All right, we have successfully befriended one of the Jedi's. Let's go ahead and try and befriend our enemy. Again, we do see uh, Cagliari as our rival. Uh, they, they historically were rivals, and our families don't like each other much. But we are a diplomat, and we know the, uh, the phrase, Keep your friends close and your enemies closer. So we're going to try and befriend the Jedi Kakagliari. Given his massive army, well, we'll have to hope that he doesn't take, you know, action against us. We did get a grandson. Ah, oh, fantastic. Galudi Torres, our grandson. We are going to give him a stewardship education. Again, we are going to try and build the future of Logodoro through economic commerce and trading. Given that we are in the middle of the Mediterranean and could easily become a trading hub, we are going to make sure that our grandson is able to administer our trading city when he comes of age. We're going to actually take him under our wing if our son will let him us as well. Let's let's see if he'll let us. Wonderful. All right. We're going to teach the lad. We're going to bring him up. Teach him the ways of rulership. One day he will have this throne himself. So we got to we got to make sure he learns. While taking a walk outside, I found a very beautiful flower. However, as I went over to make, uh, take a closer look at it, potentially to pick it up and keep it, I misstepped and accidentally stomped on it. <laughs> 13 stress. Fuck. This man's just having a mental breakdown seeing a flower. He's like Nietzsche seeing a horse beaten, I swear. The first time it happened, I barely even gave it a moment's stop, but my martial Corridora Felictu has grown bolder. His challenges no longer pass unannounced at the council table. He is testing my limits. The others are sure to follow unless I give him a taste of his own medicine. He really doesn't like us. We're going to blame everything on him. All right, we have the money. We are going to invest in a trade port. We obviously have just a bunch of ships in a dock, but it doesn't really do much, and all we can do is fish off of it. All the trade currently comes into Sardinia through Cagliari and their great port in the south. We are going to build one in the north in Cesare to rival it and hopefully get some of that trade from France and the HRE, given that we are a more convenient port for them. All right, we now have the Jedi of Cagliari also loving us. He, we're really close with him, so we are going to go ahead and also... Uh, improve opinion. We're going to spend some time corresponding with the Jedi of Galura. That every single one of the other kings of Sardinia will be on very good terms with us. Meaning despite our very small army, very small army, we will be able to hopefully uh, develop the trading city of Sasari unimpeded. Our son is going to be an absolute train wreck. He has no diplomatic ability. Meaning when we die, and we know that when our son takes power, he's going to probably hurt a lot of these, uh, a lot of these relationships we've built. Marianu has been murdered! Oh god, what could you do this to Marianu? For I have sinned. Why did you not punish me instead? He was blameless, my perfect son. Life had so much more in store for him. Our son just got murdered. We only have one heir. Well, the Torres dynasty could be off to a very short start, folks. Um, this is it. This is, this is, if he dies, it's a game over. Or we have to switch to someone else. We built, we built a beautiful port in Cesare. We, we've done so much to improve the quality of life of our people. And how are we, how has it returned to us? The murdering of our poor son, Marianu. We are gonna upgrade the trade port again. We have a, just a very small harbor. Humble Harbor sits at the shore, allowing ships to load off their cargo without much effort. So instead of a fishing port, we now have a very minor trade port. And we're gonna see if we can get to a, a larger kind of fishery and larger trading port in our life. We may be an ambitious man, but at the end of our life, we have only really I mean, we've upgraded the port of our main city massively, such that it probably even contends the port of Cagliari now. Let's look. That's a tier one harbor. We are about to have a tier two harbor. So we are about to have the biggest port in Sardinia, which does open up a lot of options for us. When Curadora fell least to tried to complete his tax thoroughly, I scolded him in front of everyone. And when he hurried to get done in time, I displayed his sloppy work for all to see. He bit himself backwards to please me, and I had never acknowledged his efforts. Now he remains quiet, eyes cast low. 
Wonderful. We manipulate this man into uh, into obedience. Definitely no ethical problems with that. Oh, we can do the befriend scheme. That's definitely worth getting. Let's see if we can try and befriend Jedi Toro Sheeter of Kegliari. Dark thoughts. Guilt and shame have been plaguing me as of late. All of my sins, my flaws, my failings. These dark thoughts distract me from my responsibilities and keep me awake at night. Same here. I feel like I must do something to put an end to this mental anguish. What could possibly be? All right, we can beat ourselves or we can become a drunkard or we can get more stressed. You know, ale is pretty nice. I gotta say, ale is pr pretty. Why did our hair do? Are we going bald? Oh my God, we're going bald. <laughs> the drunkenness and the alcohol is uh has done quite a number on our on our head. Fuck. We're balding from stress. I love that so much. That's so accurate. After laborious preparations, I was finally able to spend some time alone with Jedi Torshitter. I'm saying it wrong every time, but in different ways. In the end, distance was not a great hurdle for me to overcome in order to earn Jedi Torshitter's trust and friendship. We both learned a lot about each other during our encounter, so much so that we parted as friends. Wonderful. We are now friends with the King of Cagliari. I'm going to try and befriend all of the kings of Sardinia. Diplomacy is our strength, nothing else. I want to do the slow build up to power. That's what I, I'm in it for that. So we're going to we're gonna do that really slow build. That much damage. We have no one else. If he dies, it's a game over. This is it. We got no one else. There's no one else in our family. Jedek Andrea of Logodoro has found peace in Christ's embrace at 62 years of age. He drank himself to death. An old man, he lived a long and fulfilled life. Jedi Galu ascends to the throne merely 10 years old. He will need to rely on the council during his first years of rule. We are going to immediately not be under Bartolu anymore. We didn't like him. We don't like learning. We don't like reading. So we're going to find someone else uh, to teach us. We are going to become an expert with a spear. We are going to be a frontline commander because we are ready. And we are going to be educated by our mother for a little while. She's really good with intrigue. So uh, when we first obviously take over, we're gonna want someone we can trust behind us. So we're gonna, we're going to, our mother is our spy master and she's gonna teach us. That's realistically what would happen. So I cannot believe it. Despite my invitations and preparations, not a single person showed up to my peer meet. Fuck. Well, I don't care. I will enjoy these sweets all on my own and these toys and, and why would no one show up? Oh no. Poor Galu. While passing through the streets with my mother Cassia, we came to the pillory. A man was stuck there begging for water or any kind of relief from his fate. We can be passionate, we can be arrogant, or we can be callous. What is her traits? She doesn't have any of them, so we get to kind of choose here. Callous it is. As I was delving deeper into the book I was supposed to be studying, I realized that I had trouble grasping the finer nuances of the topic. Soon I'm supposed to present the content to my mother, but if I continue on my own, I could be stuck with the book the whole night. Oh, we're gonna, we're gonna go for it. <laughs> we had a chance to get diligent, but instead we got more stressed. Accurate. Oh man, that intrigue is really going up. Not bad stewardship, should be higher. I'm out walking with Curadora Felicitu when I hear it. It is a tiny sound, frail and scarred. I look over under every stone, around every corner, behind every bush, and finally I find it. A small puppy all alone sits between two stones. Yeah, we're, we're gonna take our pet dog. I mean, we are a villain, so uh, naming naming our dog after the guardian of the underworld does seem fitting. I've been wanting a wooden warrior for a long time and my guardian, Ramundu, is promising to get me one in three months if I start being more rigorous with my studies. Content, fickle, or trusting? It runs in our line, so we're gonna do trusting. It's such high intrigue. It's from our mother, I think. She's got 21. She's a renowned spy master and a flamboyant trickster. It has become a habit to walk Cerberus daily, and I am not sure which of us enjoys the fresh air and the sun the most. Cerberus browns ahead and looks uh, back at me and barks as if to say ketchup. Nice. Gives us a little health boost. I know I've been struggling with my studies recently, and I know that my mother has disappointed in me. What I never expected was for her to go so far as to take my favorite toy. Dude, you're 15. Come on. <laughs> my dear wooden warrior, away from me. More stress. He's really having a villain origin. Goddamn. Oh my god. Why did you choose that hat, my man? Fortune Builder, nice. With the help of Cassie, I've completed my studies of stewardship. Even if the highest aspect of the subject eludes me, I did fairly great. Thinking back on my childhood, I realized I never truly connected with anyone. Oh no. Even as I saw this, playing with friends or whispering about love, I never experienced such things myself. 
Bro, fuck, come on. I am certain the coming year will lead to new friends and new opportunities. We are impatient, callous, and trusting. We also have no sense of fashion, my man. What are you doing? Uh, yeah, that'll work. All right, we gotta find a wife. Oh no, yeah, we can go with Ilaria. Let's see if we can uh, betroth her. We can, all right, perfect. Ilaria is the daughter of the Jedi of Galura. Again, they are, mm, they are uh, related to the Pisians, but honestly, that's not a bad thing given how powerful Cagliari is. So we are going to betroth ourselves to her. She is temperate, arrogant, and generous, and rowdy. She is a bastard, so that's unfortunate, but we can live with that. We are obviously gonna go stewardship focus. We're gonna go, we'll go on domain. And with our remaining wealth, I am going to begin construction of some hill farms. I sit at the window still, staring outside. What do I see far away that I can observe with great scrutiny? Go of nature. We go hiking all the time, so we'd probably like nature. Dead man's hand. A couple weeks ago, we came across a corpse on the road that appeared to be a traveling merchant. Judging by his wounds, he was probably killed in a bandit ambush, although the region I am traveling in is not as dangerous as other parts. We do sometimes see tragedies like this. We were unable to find anyone who knew him, so we buried him. In my dreams last night, however, I was burying the merchant's corpse again when his rotted hand grabbed me. Jesus, our, our boy has so many problems. Uh, though eerie, he spoke in a polite and calm manner. I know I'm dead. I don't want to lie in a grave out here where the wolves cry. Look me up out of here, my friend, so I'll wander the night till the ages end. When he wait farewell, his hand turns skeletal. The meaning of the dream is clear. The ghost, if that was him, does not wish to be buried strangely. Should I tell my guards to take the corpse out to the burial site? No, we're not going to do that. This dude's just having a mental break at 16. <laughs> After walking like the hall in a careful ceremony, I now stand at the altar. With Valaria of Logadora across from me. All right, we're married. All right, the wedding is over. We have a chance for her to become a lover, a soulmate, a friend, a rival, or nothing. And we get... I t she says, I do not love you, nor do I know you well. Fuck, but as your wife, I promise to treat you with respect and honor. All I ask is that you provide me with the same. England did fully unite under Richard. With a tired blissful smile, Alari presents to be a perfect little daughter. The heir to the king of Cagliari is a lunatic and a murderer, and he's craven. All right, we now have a semi-large trading port, and we have some uh, hillside farms. Next thing we're going to do is build uh, a barracks. Given the fact that we are at a huge military disadvantage, and we've cultivated a bit of a, an economic base in our in our capital, probably be a good idea. We have a crusade coming, too. Good, we can send all 400 of our soldiers. As Judek, I've been obliged to attend a local sparring tournament, but the contestants have been delayed. The tourney won't last for more for at least another hour. My marshal is here and, as always, is being insufferable lout. His constant complaining is making everyone even more miserable than normal. On the other hand, I just noticed the merchant dropping off a cart of spiced wines. I announced to my council my intention to host a superb tournament complete with feast, music, and of course a variety of prowess competitions such as archery, melee, and jousting. I can see it in my mind's eye already, I exclaim excitedly, the roar of the crowd, the pageantry. A most inspiring idea, my lord, inspires steward Gabrielle, but this is an expensive endeavor, and we don't have a lot of money. Uh, I am aware of that, I reply, somewhat testily, but surely you can find a way to keep some of the coins from all the visitors that will draw from near and afar. Marshal Felice do, uh, next asks, what do you wish to hold this glorious tournament? Competitors need to be made aware and then make their way there. Sure, we can afford it, let's do it. People on the way has reached my court bringing news from the Vatican. Pope Alexander issued a call to arms to all righteous Christian rulers. As a Catholic Jedi, I am expected to prepare my men in support of the most holy cause, sponsored by the Universal Church itself. The tournament in Logadora. I accompany Steward Gabriella and Marshal Felicto to the main site of the upcoming tournament for a final inspection. A large stand consisting of two half-circles surrounded the tilting ground. Colorful awnings covered the wealthier seats. Suspended flower baskets fill the air with their perfume. Please, I see that all signs of the recent frenetic building activity have disappeared. The grounds are pristine. Outside the city walls, additional accommodation was provided for the lower town. is overflowing with spectators and merchants coming from near and far. You seem to have thought of everything. And are even ready a few days early. I commend your exemplary work in such a short time, my friends. The herald continues. Now there may be those who have wielded well the lance and who maneuver skillfully to gain love's favor. Those shall have praise and fair looks. Love who wanders not shall inflame for a queen dressed like an angel, a damsel, a body lightsome and fine. Her secret name is now revealed. All eyes turn to me as it is time to appoint the queen of gallantry, the woman whose honor all the week's events will symbolically be held. 
so we're gonna have to do our wife. The first day of the jousting competition is coming to a close. The field has been narrowed down to only four contestants. Tomorrow's morning tilts, we shall see. Ad El Rayouf Hasid against Baudu de Griffin, followed by Gottfried von Trier, a mysterious contestant who has so far refused to remove his helm in public. The crowd is abuzz with the potential champion's identity. The second day of the jousting competition has just ended. Only two contestants remain. Hasid and the knight whose identity continues to be withheld within his mask. One of these two will be declared the winner tomorrow. At last, we come to the main event of the tournament. The last tilt of jousting, and only two knights remain. At one end, I see Abed al Rayouf Hafsid beckoning in his family colors. Oh, he's dyslexic. Damn. He's a royal family. Uh, back by his family's colors, astride a beautiful white horse, impatient to prove his mettle. On the other end, the masked knight is sitting atop a black horse with no recognizable pattern or crest, pacing with full nervous energy. In a few minutes, the triumphs will sound and they will be off. Marco approaches me and asks if I would like to add a little bit of financial spice by betting against him on who will win. Yeah, sure, why not? Uh, we will... We'll bet for the... We'll bet for the masked man. We'll do that. And the two knights are off. They gallop towards each other, aiming with their lance to hit the opponent on the chest. Throw their helmet so as to knock him off his horse. The shock of their encounter is fierce. Horses and riders so fast they are almost a blur. The masked knight manages to slide his lance perfectly into Abed al Rayouf Hafsi's shield, shattering it. Rayouf's lance, in contrast, is partially parried, and owing the shaft rubs along the black knight's helm uh, side. Much of its strength lost. Having switched ends, the riders turn their mounts for a second pass. However, Abid al Rayouf, now shieldless, slides off his white stallion, removes his helmet, and bows, conceding defeat. The mysterious contestant is the tournament's champion. Wonderful. We just won some gold. Fuck yeah. After several bows and waves to the cheering crowd, the mysterious champion walks to the foot of our dais, tilts his head up, and removes his helmet. It is a maiden! A maiden in armor! Oh my. It's a woman. Fuck. I indicate that uh, she is to be brought to my box immediately. Upon arrival, she bows as deeply as her armor allows. Rise, champion. Wonders never cease. How did he learn to carry a lance and with such expertise? Ipolita di Plovaki. I think she's Polish. No, she's Sardinian. Okay. Oh, I spun cloth and helped keep the family flock as I was expected to. I watched my older brothers too, and as they learned from my father, so did I. When I was perhaps 16, our village was raided, and I discovered I was far better at military matters than at housework. At the very least, I survived, whereas the bandits did not. She ends on a quieter note. How bewildering. But you earned the prize, well done. Eh, a woman won it. Nice. Hell yeah. Oh, we actually managed to seduce our life before we left for the crusade. Wonderful. Let's, uh, let's get properly decked out for the crusade. Yeah, that'll work. Looks like they're gonna go north, probably to uh, Antioch. Our army is really not that big. Oh, fuck. There it is. That heathen army is very strong. Our army stand poised to take the crusade for Jerusalem. St. George willing, we will soon rise victorious. The blood of the heathens painting the soil red. We are now a crusader. Hell yeah. There we go. We're going to attach ourselves to the army of Rome. We will follow the Pope. Oh no. Oh, oh no. <laughs> Fuck! No! No! They got us! Fuck! We got cut off on the Pope's army and left behind. And we got absolutely slaughtered by the Muslims. Jesus. And we're prisoner now. Oh, fuck. We got abandoned by the church. They just walked away. In the scorching midday heat, they sit in the shadow under a great strum pine playing on lutes and flutes. They sing in many tongues, yet my heart can understand every word. I can hear them from my balcony and they stir my soul. Yet I do not know the identity of these musicians, and when I leave my lofty halls to approach the tree, they are gone. Are they sent from heaven, or are they fandoms that vibes of Satan to ensnare me? So we're having just hallucinations in the dungeon right now, so that's... That's not good. No, that's... That's not good at all. I've been captured and detained against my will by Sheikh Dayud. I am no longer free to return to my home or travel. We... We had a son! We seduced our wife before we left on the crusade, and she she did disperse the sun. We have no idea we just had a kid, though, because we're in prison in the Holy Land right now. The success of your attempt depends on your prowess and your traits. We have an all right prowess, but it's risky. It'll piss off the Sheik if we try and run, and he already hates us. He's terrified us due to our reputation, though. We're impatient. We try and escape from prison. 
Aha! I spent many days planning my escape, thinking about the best course of action route of escape. It all amounts to nothing, though, as one day the guard simply forgets to lock the door, staggering away without looking back. As I disappear into the night, when I am far away from it all, I tilt my head back and laugh. We actually escaped prison. All right, after escaping, obviously our army was slaughtered and we managed to uh, get back to... The Pope abandoned us and we got kidnapped and apparently we're a coward. Well, many virtuous fighters still marching on Jerusalem, I have abandoned my armies for a safer haven. You mean a prison cell? While they wage relentless war against the vile humans, I besmirch my name and put in question my resolve to pursue the crusade. Our army got slaughtered because the Pope abandoned us. We get locked in prison we managed to escape and now we're a fucking coward apparently. We literally have no soldiers left. That is absolutely insane. We're gonna send the Pope a poem about how incompetent he is. Yeah, humiliated over a poem. We was really pissed off the Pope. We're rivals now. Try to say we were a coward when we died in the Holy Land or almost died. All our men died. As soon as we get some more men back, we're going back to the Holy Land. Actually, this is fine. We got a, we got a few soldiers. We're going straight back. Getting back to Sardinia, we did find out that we had an heir and a son, though, so we'll be we'll be very happy with that. We'll go ahead, gonna ahead and educate him, and we're gonna give him a martial education. Given that we're in the Crusades right now, we have a, a very martial concept. Good, we got Crusader back. Wonderful. Let's go ahead and attach ourselves to the army of Rome again. We are a part of the Great Siege of Tiberius. Unless I'm cynical, I don't do that. Oh my gosh. Our army was absolutely crushed by the heathens in Acre. And the war is over. The Broken Cross. The warriors of St. George found only death and humiliation at the gates of Jerusalem. The crusade, so eagerly called and supported by Pope Innocentius, ended in a disastrous defeat that could only hurt the cause of the faithful. This will surely embolden more blasphemers and infidels to further stray away from Catholicism. St. George has abandoned us. We just got Holy Ward. Wali Zafir ibn Abdul Razak of Algiers has declared a Holy War for Lagodoro, for Sardinia. We have no men left either after that crusade. We lost all of our men in that battle. Only a few of them made it home. We have no men to defend Cesari with. We do have a daughter. So we're gonna we're gonna have to get an alliance. We shall betroth our first daughter to the son of the Count of Tortona. We'll gather the men and go hide in the mountains while we wait for uh, while we wait for our ally to come. The Algerians will probably be here before long, and we won't be able to hold the port, so we need to just hide in the mountains. Oh, they are coming straight for us, aren't they? All right, they're gonna come straight for us, even though we're in the mountains. We've we've tried to. <sighs> Build up a base here, but we haven't had much time to, to prepare. They are more than double our size. Here we go. Oh, come on, reinforcements. Oh, not in time. We put up a good fight, but they were just too numerous. Our allies have arrived though, so we may be all right here. We got this. I'm impatient, we're going for it. They may have the mountain, but we have a much superior army. We're gonna drive them out. Let's chase them all the way into Corsica. Oh, our commander got injured in the battle. Brutally mauled. Oh no, they're gone. We need to take the fight to them now. Two daughters. Oh, Laria, you have been so brave, so strong. We're just gonna describe my love for you. Now we have two perfect little girls. All right, we just had twins. Euphemia and Ilaria. Took the fight to them and we won. They thought they had us at our weak point and they did. But with our new allies, we overcame it. The cost we did pay was our elder daughter is going to have to marry that uh, Italian prince, but it could be much worse. 